Wiggy time on the fly. What's up, everybody? Sean Wiggins here uh, alongside myself, Ref Hans. There I am, jumping right in the way of the hard camera um, like a goof. Um, this is DPW, uh, Defiant Pro Wrestling. Uh, it was called From the Ashes was the name of this event because Connecticut indie wrestling was... Uh, it was always from the ashes. It was always a old fed, a new fed, growing from an old fed, growing from an old fed, growing from an old fed. And there's Straight Edge Brian Fury, and he tried to work as a babyface as Straight Edge. Um, I should have been paying attention right there. So he had to move me out of the corner. But really, if you're a wrestler, just don't run right to where the ref is. Um, <clears throat> but I, I should have been paying attention anyway. So it's still my fault. Brian Fury, uh, for those who don't know, became a trainer in New England, and that's part of the problem in professional wrestling today. He was training kids when he shouldn't have been training anybody. And I don't mean that as a knock. Um, there I am. At, I don't know what I'm explaining to him. I think uh, one of the ropes was loose. It's for the vacant cruiserweight championship or TV championship or U.S. championship or ABC XYZ championship, North American grappling championship, brass knuckles championship, catches catch can championship, Thumb Wrestling Championship, whatever it is. And there's the Outcast Killers in the background who just uh, had a match. Here's Mikey Bats. I, this is the main reason I put this in. There's Talia, for those of you, that's Velvet Sky from TNA in her early, 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 early days when she was a valet. Uh, I'm going to get to Mikey Bats in a second. Look at this, idiot. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because if you knew him, you'd be laughing too. Anyway, Velvet Sky, um, see that super bleach blonde? She uh, got a little color in her hair later. She always had bangs back then. And my friend and indie sensation, former WWF hardcore champion, Bobcat, for you women wrestling fans out there, always told her, cut your bangs. You, know, you shouldn't have bangs. You're going to look hotter without them. And she eventually listened and she eventually did it. I'm not saying that's why she became a star. I'm saying it's one of the reasons. Because she just, you know, not everybody looks like Talia. So she was going to make it. Uh, I like to do this old school NWA uh, present the belt. Show the fans what, the, uh, what this match is all about and what it's for. Mikey Bats. Let me get to Mikey Bats. Oh, sorry for that zoom. Let me get to Mikey Bats and then I'll go back to shitting on Brian Fury. Um, who is a friend, by the way. A fellow Red Sox fan. Uh, Brian, if you ever see this, what's up? Miss you. Love you. But, uh, well, before I shit on Mikey Bats, I'm going to go back to shitting on Brian Fury. See, I just put him over and I'm going to chop him down. Uh, too many people train too many people and they shouldn't be training. And it, that's, and the in, independent wrestling is the bloodline of pro wrestling. And if the wrong people are training people, well, who's, who's training who? You know, I mean... Now, it's not Brian's fault. Uh, you know, he had the opportunity to do it. He took it. I uh, hope he got paid extra to do it. But, ah, that Cirque de Soleil dance. I know it's kind of fast-paced. I don't like the way that looks. But, um, I don't know. And maybe that's a problem in WWE for years is that they had mid-carters as the agents. Maybe have, I mean, Brett the Hitman Hart said this. Have Brett do it. Have Piper do it. Have Bob Orton do it. Have Orndorff do it. Have guys who were on top do it. And he can't coax Morocco to leave Hawaii. It'd be nice if he could do it. I don't know. Well, I'm going off on a tangent, which I usually do. Now, to Mikey Bats. Mikey Bats is the greatest independent wrestler of all time. And if you don't believe me, just ask him. He annoyed the shit out of everybody. Everybody. Oh, Brian Fury's working heel here. All right, I was going to shit on him for not being a good enough babyface. He is working heel. Um... <clears throat> Mikey Bats told everybody, yeah, I'm, I'm Billy Kidman's nephew or Billy Kidman's cousin. And he like would tell everybody that. Like he would tell you that when you shook his hand. And he would tell everybody that he had a TNA tryout coming. Yeah, I have a TNA tryout coming. And everyone would be like, I don't give a shit what you have. Like I could care less. Like no one ever asked him. He would always tell you he was Billy Kidman's nephew and a TNA tryout's coming. Yeah, WWE's looking at me. And he would say this to me as I'm standing over him, like I'm looking down on him. And I just, I knew it was fiction. This is uh, August two, 13th, 2004. So this is 17 years ago now, 
or 16 and a half years ago now, but I knew it was bullshit then. I knew bullshit then when I heard it. And maybe that's why people hated me so much because I'd call people out on it. Like, N that's not true. And it wasn't true. Like, no one ever heard of Mikey Bats again. I don't know if he ever did get a WWE tryout. Oh, that team. See, and this is, uh, I guess it's a heel tactic you got to use, but and Ty is not slick enough to know to get out of the way at that point. But, um, oh, all right, that kind of worked. Yeah, if you have a valet, use it. But uh, Mikey Bats was such a goof. He didn't know what he was doing. He was worried about his next spot. Hey, look, there's fat-ass girl chaser Dave Padula in the front row. Um, just one of these marks who would drive girls around, like my girlfriend at the time. Um, so if he sees this, and, and a lot of people got pissed at Dave Padula when he'd be sitting front row because he'd take up three, four chairs. Uh, Brian Fury now taking the action into the... Uh, which should be the aisle way, but there was no way to get the fans, to get the wrestlers to come out from those doors. I mean, this is a kind of low-budget indie in Connecticut, Naugatuck, Connecticut. So it was hard for them to, you know, uh, put a lot of funding in it to get a big uh, entranceway. But the entranceway is like that curtain behind the rope there that you see. So the wrestlers, like, take, you know, they walk 30 inches during the ring, not even. And uh, it's a little hard to, I don't know, be one with the crowd. You need an aisle way. But, I don't know. DPW obviously didn't last too long after this. Um, they had a few more shows. Anywho, but yeah, Mikey Bats. Uh, <laughs> he's one of my favorite wrestlers. He was, I legitimately, he was my favorite wrestler to talk to in the back. Cause I would eventually soup him up. I'd be like, hey man, hey, how, how's TNA looking? And he would be, I don't think he ever realized that he wasn't in on the joke. Like, everybody was in on it but him. Um, and the, the funny part was, like, look, he's fast. He's He could move well. He, uh, that didn't quite work out. But uh, uh, the, not all those things are going to work out. Brian Fury actually looking good in this match. But uh, I have ref for Brian Fury. Nice kick. I have ref for Brian Fury where he was, like, lost or he was in outer space during the match. And I was like, because uh, he, he, he was training people, like, a little bit after this. Like, maybe today he could. But I don't know if you're not if you haven't been in the ring with a lot of guys who've been in the ring a long time, or you haven't been in the industry for at least twenty years, you shouldn't be training anybody. You know, train yourself first. And the problem is with the indies today, even back then, but especially today, what two? Is there three indies a week? I doubt it. it can't be. Uh, I'm sure you could run on Saturday night. You people have to try to run on Friday, but can you really run on Sunday? People don't really go to shows anymore. It's been COVID even, you know, killed it worse. Uh, a lot of good back, <laughs> yeah, pretty good back and forth action. Mikey Bats could move. A, he couldn't talk. B, he was like four foot nine in high heels standing on a freaking ladder. Like he was so small. And uh, he also had a knack for throwing up during matches, which I popped for huge. It was awesome. Because he would soup himself up so much. He'd get so anxious before the match and he I don't know if he like ate a plate of fettuccine Alfredo before each match like Michael Scott during the fun run but uh, he would always throw up during the match any matches that I refed anyway remember I saw him maybe two years after this and you know we remembered each other and he put a, put weight on I guess he was off the gas and uh, I don't know it was funny but <laughs> oh yeah, see that looked good see and I'm shitting on him, but I will put over if things do look good, and that looked good. Talia uh, on the outside trying to get her man, uh, soup him up, be a little hype. <laughs> See, I just put you over, and then that was a shit. If you're going to jump on the rope and do like that that, that flying leg lariat, it better look good. It better be precise. I mean, leave that to the pros. <clears throat> leave that to Rey Mysterio Jr. and Red and uh, Loki and host others, AJ Styles. But you can't just fuck those things up because it looks brutal. Like, it's hit or miss. It's a home run or it's a bad swing and a miss. Is that Bulldog Blansk in the background? Looks like him. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. If not, uh, it's just another fat guy. But that guy doesn't look like he sweats too much for a fat guy. Yeah, maybe he does. He's got a leather jacket on in summer inside of a building, so... But, you know, my fashion's weird. So who am I to pick on anyone else's? Uh, no, 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 no. Two, only two arms went down. The third didn't go down. Did anyone ever win with that? Ever beat a baby face with that when they were doing a comeback spot? Like, or, or, or right before the comeback, I should say. See, that looked like shit. Oh, it was brutal. 
That's got to be a hundred percent, or or it's or it sucked. It, it can't look ninety percent good. Oh, that's a concession stand. That's why you see people walking back and forth. Brian Ferry, do though, trying his best. I mean, it's a fast-paced match, and for the most part, the action is fast. He, uh, but you know, Mikey's missed on stuff already. Did he throw up yet? Tell me, he throws up in this match. I haven't seen this match since August 13, 2004. I just found this video cassette in, my, in a box. I like putting these hidden gems up. Mikey. Back and forth action here with Fury going at it. Pa, pa, pa. <laughs> See, that Cirque de Soleil bullshit. I hate it. Looks so phony. I know that's wrestling today. Two count only. See, I did get... Now, referees, if out there... You do have to count to the... You push there. Oh, now they see Fury. Oh, and I had to back up. Oh, that was well done by both of us. I stood my ground. He could have sold it a little more. But as soon as he got, you know, like he's going to hit me, I backed up but still showed my my superiority in the ring because I'm the law and order. You can't mess with me. Too much up, do -si do back and forth. They're dancing. What? Oh, that looked good. Two, three. Hey, there's a three count. Mikey Bats gets the victory over Brian Fury, becomes the first ever DPW, ABC, XYZ, North American, Independent Brass Knuckles, North American, East Coast, Midwestern Region, Heavyweight, Intercontinental Television Champion. And Talia Madison celebrating with him and trips and falls on her high heels. That's okay. She's looking pretty. See, when you're that, when you're that good looking, you can... Trip and fall and do whatever you want. For Sean Wiggins, I'm Ref Hansen. Please drive safe. Arriva Dirty and Chow. And uh, tell Mikey Bats I said hello. And please ask him about his TNA tryout. He can tell you all about it. Sign it off. Now there's Bulldog Blansk. There's Bulldog. So Bulldog Blansk's twin brother was in, in the background. All right, legitimately sign it off this time.